Memento Mori Stories, a podcast that reminds us that we will die and that celebrates the deeply personal and sometimes whimsical ways we create to remember death and cherish life. How we bridge the gap, the sometimes deep, painful, and soul-searching gap between life and death. How we remember those we have loved, the things we keep, the phrases we use, the foods we prepare, the places we hold dear. This is your invitation to listen generously to one such story, a Memento Mori story. My parents were unable to go back and visit their family in China till after 1972 because there was no way to get a visa to visit the communist China where they were both born. So what occurred in, I think, 73 or 74 is after my father decided to go back, he got a visa and was able to travel back to China. He was gone for about a week and a half or two weeks. And when he came back, he brought back some small little gifts. One of those was a series of small rings, silver rings, which were made for both my brother and the rest of my siblings. When I asked my dad what these were, he indicated that his uncle, his, excuse me, his brother had saved a silver ring and that it had been cut into small bands and made as gifts for us, his children, by his brother. I thought that was very interesting, but at that point in time, I was probably 22 and didn't think much of it. However, when I thought about it a little bit more when I was about 25 or 26, I thought it was a really great thing. And what I did is I had the ring soldered and I wore it on my right hand where my ring finger would be to remind me both of my parents and where they had come from since I had never met any of my parents' relatives who lived in China. So the ring reminds me of that time when my father went to China and of all those relatives who I never really got to meet until much later. I remember the first time I ever met my parents' relatives, both specifically on my father's side, because in 1994, we went back to China, my two kids at the time and my wife at the time, to go back to my father's village with my mother, who was still alive, to tell them that my father had passed away and also to say a prayer in my father's village. I guess it's a spiritual homecoming for my father. At that point in time, I met two of my uncles and my aunt, and they commented on the fact I had had this little silver ring, which they had given as a gift over 20 years before. The interesting thing about this ring is silver tends to tarnish, but either through wearing it since 1975 or so to now, it's never tarnished. It's always stayed a bright silver. And when I look at it, it reminds me of my cultural upbringing. And those relatives who I met once, but have really not seen again. So I would say that it both was given to me as a gift, and therefore later uh, on, I ended up choosing it as something that would be a reminder that I would keep with me for the rest of my life. It brings feelings of kinship with my, I guess, both ancestors and family in China. Also brings sadness because I never really got to know my dad's family or my mother's family since she uh, actually came from a nearby village, which we also visited when we ended up going to China. So sadness that I really didn't grow up with my extended family. Also, I felt gratitude to my parents because based on the life we had here in the United States, in Boston, versus the life that my relatives had in the small, poor village in China. So I think it reminds me of that family there and 
or life in the United States at the time. That generation is now no longer with us. I still have many cousins in China. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to sort of get back in touch with them through one other cousin who ended up emigrating on her own here, who speaks both Cantonese and Toisanese as well as English, who parents still live in Hong Kong and still talk with that side of the family in China. But when I look at the ring, I I definitely think of my father and his side of the family in that small village in China. Thanks for listening. Compassion and listening are so valuable in bringing healing to our lives after loss. So, how about you? Do you have a story about something that reminds you of a special someone, a beloved pet, an event, or a place that brings comfort? Please contact Memento Mori Stories through this podcast or our Facebook or Instagram pages. I would love to hear from you.